Coming up, we'll meet the Piankavas, a Polish-American family that feel at home in the United States and at the same time proudly cherish their Polish identity. And later, we'll see how a cultural center in the heart of New York City preserves this rich and colorful history. We'll also taste some delicious Polish bites and dance to the traditional tunes of Poland. All coming up on the next World in America. Poland is here. There's a lot more there than just a Polish joke. We like to celebrate, we like to sing. If you have two Poles in a room, you'll have three opinions. We can assimilate easily to this life. We chose to live here, we chose that country, we love it, but we want to remember about our heritage. The Republic of Poland is located in Central Europe. It houses beautiful green valleys, gorgeous mountains, and magnificent lakes. There has been human habitation in the region for seven millennia. But the history of Poland as a state begins a millennium ago. Poland was established in the year 966. Uh, that's regarded as the first year of Poland as a nation. That's when King uh, Mieszko was baptized in the Catholic Church. And ever since then, Poland became a, a very strong Catholic country. Later in the 16th century, Poland joined hands with Lithuania to form a commonwealth, becoming a strong European power until the late 18th century. Since then, Poland went through numerous attacks, occupations, and expulsions by various powers, most importantly, Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union. Finally, in 1989, Poland ended its communist regime, rising up as a fully democratic country with free market economy. They drove the communists out. There were free elections in Poland. And during that 20 years, Poland has become a free, democratic, capitalistic society. Many significant migration waves from Poland to America have taken place since the very beginning of the United States. The original Poles came to uh, the United States in, in 1608 in Jamestown. Uh, and then in the American Revolution you have Tadeusz Kościuszko who came, Kazimierz Pulaski, uh, and many other Poles that came and fought in the American Revolution. Each time the Poles tried to rise up against the Germans or against the, the Russians, and those, those revolts failed. They would come over in waves. There was one in 1830. And so after World War II, and because of communism, a lot of Poles fled the totalitarian state, the, the evil empire that Ronald Reagan said uh, you know, about the Soviet Union. Americans receive new members to their ranks every day. During the late 80s, two of these new members, Danusha and Kaz, arrived to the new world as single individuals not only to make the states their new home, but also to find lifetime partners in each other. Ale para idzie gorąca w górę. Ciekawe, kto dostanie pierwszego wafelka? Dla kogo jest pierwszy wafelek? I am Danusia Swiatek, a full-time mama and a freelance writer. I've been in the United States for the last 20 years. O, oh, jakie piękne. Teraz czekamy, tata wóz. You have to cut them in the middle. Tak, ale My name is uh, Kazimierz Pienkawa. Uh, my American friends called me Kaz, and that's my also uh, legal name here, uh, because it's uh, much easier uh, to pronounce. You can put it together, but you have to 
come here with the chair. No, we'll put it here. See? Can I do that? I first time arrived to the United States when I was 13. My father was uh, working for the uh, Polish shipyard industry and he was working in Manhattan in the World Trade Center. America gave me many things. One of them is my Polish husband. When we met, I think we hit it off from the first time. After two years, we got married. Then he went to school. Then I went to school. Then we decided to buy a house. Then we want to, to have children. When Kaz first moved to the United States as a young teenager, he was mesmerized by the American lifestyle with all of its bells and whistles. That first awe gradually transformed into a wholesome and sophisticated appreciation of what America has to offer him and his family. When I arrived here, uh, everything was uh, amazing for me. Seeing the traffic, the, the multiple lanes of uh, trucks, taxis, you know, the yellow cabs, uh, easily visible from above and the uh, size of buildings, you know, size of uh, Manhattan. That was a, a tremendous experience for a teenager leaving the, uh, the country to see uh, the Western world for the first time. When uh, Polish people arrive in this country, uh, I think they are embraced by the American culture. Americans are not very particular uh, about, uh, for example, uh, making a big deal that uh, somebody is not speaking a very good English or speaks English with an accent. My children have this opportunity to meet people of different religion, of different beliefs, of different color of their skin. And they don't have to travel far away to learn about the whole world. Poswa kajolin ka doga galin ka. Tak zanjom jak se vodom pa. Sasad skombina. Hey. As the Pian Kavas feel more and more American, they also feel the need to transfer their Polish cultural essentials to their beautiful children. To this end, Danusha and Kaz believe in the importance of teaching them Polish, as language is the conduit of culture. They speak English all day long, but we care about our Polish heritage. That's why we decided, with my husband, to split. Czy kupujemy wielbłąda, czy królika, czy psa, czy kota? Może znajdziemy... Mo, może na... Czy słychać, panie tygrysie? A przy tym ma bieg i prędki, że chociaż tego nie lubi... My wife speaks to them in Polish. No, na tarasie nie muszą stać, mogą stać na trawie. Yes, i corn. And I speak to them in English. Uh, where would you keep the elephant? Outside. Oczywiście w ogrodzie. We're outside. That will give them uh, an ability to learn more about the Polish culture. When they go to Poland, we try to take them every year for vacation, an extended vacation for them, uh, sometimes six to seven weeks. The first time when we went to Poland, it was three years ago, and uh, especially Kimberly, was so mesmerized about the people around us, about the places.
So when we came back to the United States, she kept talking about her new friends, about cousins, about uncles, about Misha Vieja, about Warsaw, and she wanted to draw different pictures. I asked her, do you want me to write a few words in Polish and English to each your drawing? And she said, yes, mommy. And that's how our book was born. We decided to share this book with our Polish and American friends. So we've been to different daycares and schools, Polish and American, and we read this book to many children. Kimberly recently ignited a special emotion in her mother's heart. This is an epiphany every immigrant in the U.S. goes through, sooner or later. When Kimberly went to her first grade, the first day, I was with her. And I remember her singing a patriotic song. This is my land, from California to New York Island. I looked at her and I said to myself, wow, I have American at home. She was so happy singing that song and then I'm thinking, wow, this is her land and this is my land too. It was a very moving moment for me and for my child and actually it was the moment when I felt American. The P in Kava's attention to maintain Polish culture also reverberates in the heart of New York City. Under the leadership of Alex Storoyinski, the Kosciuszko Foundation carries gems of Polish art towards presenting their rich history. Kosciuszko was Poland's greatest hero. He came to America and fought in the American Revolution. The Kosciuszko Foundation was started in 1925 uh, and named in his honor because he was somebody who linked Poland with the United States. Uh, so we promote Polish culture and a better understanding of Poland in the United States. We're sitting here in the headquarters and we have a, quite a collection of Polish artwork from some of Poland's greatest painters. These are some of Poland's uh, greatest uh, painters that, that have painted part of Poland's history. Also showcased in the museum are vibrant photographs of Warsaw the capital of Poland, during and prior to the Second World War. On this floor you see photographs from the uprising, the Polish uprising against the Nazis. Downstairs uh, we have photographs of what uh, Warsaw looked like before 1939, before World War II. Poland did play a significant role you know, in European history, but also in American history. The Kosciuszko Foundation continues to strengthen the natural ties between American and Polish traditions. Located in northern New Jersey, Royal Warsaw is the place to be if you're hungry for some Polish bites. The restaurant was opened in 2003. 
Any delicious Polish meal begins with a warm, hearty rye soup, the Jurek. Now I'm gonna prepare for you guys one uh, rice soup. We're gonna serve the soup with kielbasa. And two eggs. And after that the soup. In Poland for the Easter, we serve the Jurek for the breakfast. A Polish specialty, Eskalopka Warsaw takes chicken breast to a whole other level. We're gonna start with the chicken first time. After that, we're gonna take the ananas. We're gonna grill it all on the grill for two minutes, one minute. And after that is gonna come the cheese. After that we're gonna put it in the broiler for two minutes. We're gonna decorate the plate with the three salads, three Polish salads. We're gonna choose today like um, make potato. The escalopka is already done. We're gonna put it in the plate. Enjoy, Smajnego. If you ever want to open your palate to savory pancakes, the famous Polish potato pancakes is the way to go. We're gonna heat the pan 350 degrees, put the potato pancakes. And they're gonna cook like uh, two minutes for one side, two minutes for another side. So after it's done, one side and another, we're gonna pull it out on the plate. And we're gonna put the goulash in one side of the pancakes. And we're gonna cover it with another pancake. We're gonna serve in the same way with the three salads. And this is uh, our traditional uh, Polish uh, potato pancakes. Enjoy. Somewhere between ravioli and dumpling lies the Polish pierogi, which is served either as savory or a sweet dish. Here, Chef John prepares a plate of sweet strawberry pierogi. This is the, the, the dessert, to what we're gonna do for you guys today, the, the strawberry pierogi, truskawska pierogi. Inside there are strawberries, truskawska and sugar. We're gonna start to plating the, the, the plate. We put, we put in some kiwi syrup, some chocolate dressing. And some raspberry. After that, we're gonna add the pierogi, one by one. And the stro strawberry, I just cut it. and the mint for a better view. And finally, we're gonna put a little bit of strawberry dressing. This is our dessert for today. Uh, raspberry pierogi, Ruskavska pierogi, enjoy. Smajnego. I love to eat them, I can eat like 15 of them. <laughs>
Taking place in eastern Pennsylvania every Labor Day weekend, the annual Polish-American Festival is where it all goes down for many generations of Polish-Americans. This event's been going on for 44 years already. Actually, last week I met the first organizers and they were showing me and telling me how many people showed up here. Apparently there were 15,000 people on the first day of this event. Many Polish people here who were born here in America. It wouldn't be fair to assume that it's only about having fun. The attendees of the Polish American Festival recognize and call attention to the importance of such events. Culture is important to a lot of Americans and Polish Americans because we're very proud of our other cultures. It's very important for people like myself who are fourth generation to know where our past comes from. The next generation of Polish Americans are cognizant about what attracts them to these events year after year. I've been coming here since I was in my mother's womb. My mother's been coming here since she was four years old. You know, I've been watching this my entire life. I've been going to this event since I was born, and this is the one thing I wait for the entire year. I, I love it. It's my life. just started the Polish festival last year and it's just so much fun to be around all the people and to dance with everybody. Oh, it's just nice to see, oh, there's other people out there that have my name too and I'm not alone. <laughs> Walking around here, you're all family because we all came from, you know, somewhere of the same place. I mean, I don't know everybody here but I feel connected to everyone. Colorful dances, a rich history, sophisticated artwork, and solid family values are only a few precious qualities that Polish Americans add to the big and tasty salad bowl of the United States. <laughs>